All right. Okay. So, hi, everybody. Uh, and Mark, thank you very much for that introduction to myself. Uh, I'm really excited to introduce the next section of our workshop. Uh, and this is about security. Security is key. It's something that the area has been working on for a while. Uh, we find that it's a lot of our enterprises talk to us about security as being an issue and something we've done a lot of work on. So unfortunately, some of the real experts and thought leaders aren't able to be with us today, but they were kind enough to do a recording and we'll be able to pick up some questions afterwards. And I'll be certainly happy to take any questions and take it back to the team at Brainwave and anybody else in the security committee. So this section is called Overcoming the Challenges of AI Security. What I'd like to do is introduce the uh, speakers today on this um, call. So perhaps, Tony, if you could do the next slide and we can show your faces. Here we go. We have Tony Hodgson, the founder and CEO and Area Security Committee Chair of Brainwave, at Brainwave, sorry, and Bob LaBelle, a experienced uh, senior associate at Brainwave who's, who knows a lot about this stuff as well. So I'm basically going to ask some questions to these guys. They're going to give some answers, some insights, and some real thought leadership uh, experience and knowledge. Um, so I'm going to just crack on with a few questions. And, and the first one, at a nice high level, is to ask these guys, why is security perceived as a barrier to full AR adoption? Perhaps, Tony, you'd like to take a blast at that. Great. Absolutely, Mark. Hey, thank you very much. And we appreciate the opportunity to speak everyone here. I know you guys have been here for a while already, and we hope that you get some uh, good information out of this particular session, as well as the other sessions that you're in. Wish we could be there with you. When it comes to augmented reality, um, all of us in this room certainly are well aware of the benefits. It's not really a question for the enterprise about whether augmented reality is uh, a beneficial technology to incorporate. Um, However, there are uh, challenges that we have had reported repeatedly, repeatedly from people in industry as they begin to move from the prototyping stage where they show great promise for the technology and the solutions into the production stage. And in most cases, the challenges that they have are include definitely the IT security group who is wary about this new technology and the information that's being gathered and how it's going to be used, um, et cetera. So uh, that we'll talk a little bit more about some of the challenges related to AR technology and what makes it a barrier. But why this is important is because for enterprise managers who are trying to take their uh, pilot successful pilot programs and push them into production, they're going to run into challenges with that, uh, the enterprise IT and maybe even the mobility departments in getting the certification and approvals to move ahead. And so part of the work that we're doing in the committee and with reports we've done and in this industry generally um, are to help provide guidance on developing a comprehensive security plan to whatever level of fidelity makes sense and uh, then be able to to address some of those concerns of the security, uh, IT and mobility groups. Also for device vendors and for application developers and even for system integrators, there's no way that the solutions that are being provided by those of you who are in those particular stakeholder groups are gonna, are gonna sell and be adopted at scale unless you can meet some of these certification um, requirements of the different uh, teams that are looking at that. Um, you certainly don't want to introduce any new threat to an enterprise. And, you know, that could potentially set up issues of people um, being legally liable, perhaps even if uh, production grinds to a halt or if people are injured or, or uh, worse. So um, as AR begins to move from this initial proof of value stage into actual production, we want to help address how these challenges that are being presented can be overcome. Okay, thank you, Tony, for that introduction. And that's really interesting. And I'm sure 
uh, people within the audience uh, either having these problems now or will definitely see these problems as they move from the, as you say, the prototypes of production part. So perhaps it would be worth now talking a little bit about who Brainwave are, how you got involved in this area and got involved in the, the um, with the area as well, if you know what I mean, got involved in AR and with the area. I think it's important to understand uh, the capability and the skills of the organization as well. So perhaps you can talk a little bit about Brainwave and the team, please. Yes, definitely. Brainwave is a three-year-old consulting firm uh, with our members uh, distributed mostly across the United States, but also globally. And we're engineers and scientists and technologists, um, serial entrepreneurs in some cases, uh, from a variety of sectors of industry with over 300 years of collective in experience in enterprise IT, in mobility and mobile solutions for enterprise, and in industrial IoT, and then uh, over 40 collective years of experience related to augmented reality and VR to a lesser degree in enterprise environments. So what we do is provide uh, consulting to companies on strategy, on how to design programs and get the most effective return on investment. And then also a subspecialty in that area is with cybersecurity specifically on how you uh, should think about that, how you can incorporate cybersecurity elements into your solutions so that you uh, maintain good uh, foundations for growth of those applications in production. Uh, myself, I've spent 35 years uh, first as an engineer in uh, NASA and commercial space programs, uh, then in telecommunication and enterprise uh, level uh, computer networking uh, solutions, and I was also a, a development director at a leading U.S. technology startup incubator accelerator organization in Houston. Bob, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, thank you. Uh, my name is Bob LaBelle. Um, I'm a partner at Brainwave. I've been working there with Tony and the team for a few years now. Uh, prior to that, I spent 25 years with the IEEE, in particular in the Standards Association, overseeing their emerging technology space. Uh, Mark had asked, how did we get involved in AR? How did I? Well, I was involved in AR long enough ago that it was a new and emerging technology. So we spent a lot of time at the IEEE in, in standards looking at the technology, where it would apply to industry, where it would apply across the sectors, where it makes sense to uh, standardize on uh, certain parts of it and to allow the other stuff to, you know, be uh, proprietary. So, yeah, this is a, this is a, a good, uh, a long journey for us, and uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Bob. So, you were lucky enough, and Christine would have explained earlier about the research um, capability we have in the area, uh, and the area were lucky enough to be involved with Brainwave and use Brainwave to do the first area research project, which is around security in wearables. Actually, and this has probably already been mentioned, but this report will be available for everybody. So we will make sure that everybody attends the workshop and have a copy of this. But I think there's there's more depth to the, the research and it will be great, perhaps um, Tony and Bob, if you can talk through some of the background, the process you use and the key findings to that research to really add some uh, depth to uh, the research and, and the benefit it would be for the people attending the event and basically just get an insight to what you found around security and wearables. Yes, excellent. Thank you very much, Mark. Oops, hitting the wrong button here. Okay, Oops. let's go backwards. There we go. So uh, we started out when we're looking at the area of cybersecurity for wearables to characterize the work that had previously been done by anyone, if we could find anything like that, and then what the current landscape looked like. And so we undertook a variety of activities in order to do that. We conducted extensive literature search. We read through hundreds of case studies. Uh, we looked at companion technologies or technologies that we thought were parallel in some regards, like enterprise mobility management uh, that that also have mobile devices that are being deployed um, out into industry. We also had 
um, a complete set of interviews that we conducted with both members of the area and then others outside across the stakeholder spectrum. And out of that, we, uh, oh, one other item I should mention was pretty important, and that is a, a 2016 survey that the area had done regarding um, cybersecurity and the identifying the source and potential magnitude of security risks from the area members' perspective. Like, what has your experience been around that? And what sort of strategies for risk mit mitigation have you undertaken? And uh, how effective have those been? So we, we uh, went back to that survey and we pulled some of that data forward. And so this we produced two reports out of this research. The first one, risk and management, is where we go into detail about our findings with about everything that I just mentioned. So this report lays the groundwork. It sets the, the, uh, the, the foundation for what we then went on to create, which is the security framework and test protocol. And we'll be talking more about elements of how we got to that. But basically what these do is provide a, a, a kind of a comprehensive and practical guideline to assist all the stakeholders in developing and or improving their cybersecurity program around augmented reality solutions. So uh, how to prioritize your plans and goals so that you maintain a strong security posture, um, a step-by-step -step, uh, test protocol, and, and this is a, a um, I'd call it a skeleton architecture that people can use and then they'll need to customize that architecture for their particular applications in their particular environment. Um, so the intention of this whole research project and the development of these reports is that by helping the stakeholders understand these security topics and the risks that are being presented and using some of the guidelines that are provided here in conjunction with additional uh, additional work on those particular topical areas that each of you as stakeholders can begin to deal with these complex and important data security issues earlier in your project planning, which is going to end up hopefully speeding your funding and your deployments and your approvals and therefore ultimately improving the impact of your programs. So let me move forward here and tell you a little bit more deeply about some of this work. Some of the top security concerns that we uncovered were around the concept of bringing consumer technology into the enterprise, because some of these solutions are not at all hardened for enterprise environments. And then is the enterprise data and intellectual property leaking out? Who has access to the devices? Who, uh, what data is being gathered by the device and being pushed to the devices. And of that data that's coming off of the device, where is that device going? Who has access to that? Uh, one thing that sort of came up in different flavors was, tell us more about this spatial mapping functionality and what kind of issues might that arise? Because if we're mapping your production plan in 3D, um, and that's available to anyone else, which we found that it certainly is, even without the user's knowledge in some cases, then, uh, you know, what is that? How do we deal with that? That's a kind of a new animal. And then what is it that we don't know that we don't know? So as we dove into that, we started out with a fundamental premise that I think a lot of people have that, well, AR wearable headsets, are pretty much the same, only different, as enterprise-grade mobility solutions that are being deployed right now. Tablets and smartphones being deployed by teams, uh, both inside facilities and also out into the field. Or maybe in some ways they're similar to more like IoT, uh, the latest, newest IoT, not so much um, uh, prior uh, industrial control system data, but but the latest IoT sensors, especially wireless sensors. So there have to be some parallels. And we found, of course, that there certainly are. However, we also found that there are some specific distinctions between 
AR solutions and these other solutions, which makes them unique and that treating them as anything but unique can be not only an inaccurate and improper way of doing it, but it could potentially be dangerous. Bob, would you talk a little bit about how we looked at some other standards and frameworks that are out there? Well, thank you, Tony. Uh, I think uh, when we first started to look at this, we, we looked at it as Tony mentioned, that IoT or IIoT and mobility may be the start point. But we had to go out and do our research as well. So we went out and, and did quite a bit of uh, searching, uh, looking at use cases, looking at what the uh, what industry was providing. And we found very little information on um, AR and security in the, uh, in the enterprise. So because that, uh, because of that uh, uh, yielded such little uh, results or positive results with that, we decided to take a, a another approach. And I think the only approach that made sense at the time and still makes sense is to, to look at an equivalency model. So we, we identified IoT and mobility as the equivalents. And so we, we approached this in a tiered, tiered ma manner. We looked at, at, if you're looking at the screen, we looked at the, the risk analysis and threat uh, assessment. And we decided to look at the standards organizations and organizations that spend a lot of time in that space. Uh, IEEE, uh, IEEE Cybersecurity Initiative being one of those. Uh, it provides a test bed. Uh, OWASP, it, um, it uh, provides a classification of security risks and the uh, NIST framework on the same level. Um, and then if you go up these levels, we look at more specific stuff that applies to the classification of the data and the information that's exchanged and, uh, and jumping all the way to the top, which is the Area Enterprise AR Security Framework, which was what we'd come together as a team to develop to fill the gap between those other technologies, those other frameworks, and, and what we saw as the missing were, were the gaps. Thank you. Okay, hey, Tony, I think you're on the mute. You're, you're right, I was on mute. Uh, so one of the things that we did uh, that was really important and, and very insightful was we had formed these hypotheses about various areas of cybersecurity, and we, uh, we went and acquired devices and actually did hands-on testing. These are, these are some of the guys here. Um, actually did hands-on testing with devices in, in different sort of scenarios in order to validate that this framework that we put together um, actually had value. And it did very much shape the way that we presented uh, ultimately in the final reports, um, the framework and the test protocol. And uh, I would mention that uh, there were a lot of area companies, and you can see their logos down here on the bottom, who contributed significantly to the thought that uh, went into this research project and the result of it. So uh, we still have great appreciation for their contribution and continue to do uh, work with them. So. Mark, I think the next is, uh, is sort of, so that kind of wraps up where, how we got to where we are today and the, uh, the, the impetus for the research project and the resulting um, reports. And then since that time, we've continued our conversations and continued our inquiries to further develop and flesh out uh, the different areas of uh, security related to the, the AR solutions. And, and that naturally led into the area security committee being uh, formed, initiated, and uh, and that's where we stand today. Yeah, thank you, Tony. Let me just add a little bit of um, flavor and color to that. So you'll be able to see both the reports that'll be available. There are some copies here for you to have a look at as well. It's uh, a very in-depth and uh, interesting read. It doesn't answer all the questions because we don't have answers to all the questions. But we've decided to make that available. The report was done over a year ago. Things move so quickly in this industry. However, through um, Tony and Bob's leadership, 
and through the, the joint work of the Area Security Committee, we're continuing to drive forward to understand the challenges and to look at solutions to those as well. So I think, Tony, perhaps, um, Bob, you can talk a little bit about some of the initiatives we're doing now and maybe have a little crystal ball time and gaze into the future about how you can see this space moving forward and what kind of other initiatives you need to do to make sure that security is not a barrier to adoption, um, but it's something we can deliver and sort out very quickly. Perhaps I can hand back to you guys. Right, very good. So in the security committee, we have monthly um, calls. Everybody gets together. Um, we have follow the standard um, area format uh, for reviewing the minutes and uh, the, ag the agenda for this meeting, the minutes from last meeting, get approval or any modifications uh, that are suggested to that. And then we move on to our various projects and action items associated with those. And one of the things that we do is try to have, uh, if we can, at least one of the companies that's participating provide a 15 minute overview of lessons learned that they have related to AR. So what kind of projects have you taken on? Um, what uh, kind of success have you had? What kind of challenges have you had? And what guidance would you provide to the other people uh, on the call about uh, undertaking similar initiatives? Um, we also have a situation where uh, Google has come out with a list of guidelines related to wearable devices or rather related to mobile devices that are useful for organizations that are trying to certify devices from a security standpoint. So this is great for mobile devices, uh, conventional mobile devices, but when it comes to wearables specifically and AR headsets more specifically, the there are gaps in uh, Google's uh, guidance and certification criteria, and there are also some things that need to be reworked if you're looking specifically at these new devices. Why is this important? Well, the huge fraction of mobile devices that are out there right now are Android devices. Many of the augmented reality devices are Android based. However, enterprises, and I'm speaking generally, have come to value the relatively higher degree of security that using iOS solutions, iOS-based solutions, provide. So we have an issue here. Google wants to move more, and Android wants to move Android devices more into the enterprise arena. These mobile uh, uh, managers in the enterprise often favor the iOS solutions. So in order to do that, they're gonna to need to be able to certify these, uh, these other devices that are out there. So uh, we have taken it as an initiative to put together a list of recommendations that we're going to be providing to Google that they can uh, consider and hopefully incorporate into their certification criteria. And uh, we think that that can help overcome one of the barriers that's slowing down uh, proliferation of AR in the enterprise. We also have several different topics uh, for white papers that we're working on. There's another really interesting uh, situation where enterprise executives work to get directors and officers insurance coverage to uh, protect themselves and the corporation should they inadvertently adopt some element of their solution that, that causes uh, harm in some regard to themselves or others. And when they come to that, there is no standard for cybersecurity for augmented reality solutions. So uh, we're working to put together a list of best practices and then take those in the white paper and uh, work with the insurance industry to try to come together on what makes sense regarding a fair and appropriate evaluation 
of augmented reality solution incorporation into these enterprise activities. Uh, we also have plans to produce an infographic that's uh, very similar to one that's been done in the safety arena at the area and uh, pr use that as a, a focal point for conversations, not only ourselves and between our cybersecurity team, uh, but with other area members and then those area members and stakeholders with other folks. So um, these are just some of the activities that we have going on and um, right now. Okay, thank you, Tony. So I was gonna pass sorry. over to Bob. Yeah, go on, Bob, perhaps you can talk a little bit of your insights. <laughs> Uh, thank you. So, so, so I see a lot of value in the uh, in the um, security committee. It's 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 a place for like minds to come together. People are experiencing very similar problems and uh, may not even know they have the challenges ahead of them. Uh, the AR and the enterprise are at various stages. The uh, the ones that have gone before you, oh, man, it's great to be able to talk to them, be able to find out where their success stories are where or they uh, had the hiccups, or maybe even downright, you know, outright failures. So I, I think that community is a, it's crucial to be able to get people together. But I think uh, I talk quite a bit uh, on the calls about the establishment of trust. So for me, trust is, uh, it's uh, hard to earn, it's hard to create, and very easy to break. And that being said, we, we have a couple committees that would uh, would help you um, to be able to, uh, to uh, interact differently, be able to work with the right people. The safety committee is one of them. There's not a privacy committee yet, but we'll roll that in underneath um, cybersecurity for now. You know, for, for trust to be established uh, from my vantage point, it, you have to feel safe. You have to feel like your, your information is being protected and you have to feel like you have control over it. So, so when these three things come together, then you start to establish trust. And that trust means a lot of things, not just between the individuals working on it, but the executives in the company, the people investing in you and the like. I think this is a perfect place for between the safety committee and the cybersecurity committee to help to, to uh, help people be informed how to speak the language of the executive and vice versa, the executive can speak you know, as much cyber tech or safety that they, they need to get their job done. I think this is a, a perfect place for these type of activities to start, you know, start to, to um, be seeded and to, to start to grow. Um, that's just one side of it. Other future possibilities is we're looking around and trying to see whether things like certification makes sense for um, augmented reality, secure cybersecurity and augmented reality. So is there a place for certification above that? Is there a place in the future for um, uh, identification of the particular uh, devices and the lights or, or um, virtual um, applications running? We're not sure, but that's that's something for the, the community itself to, to look at, examine, say, yes, this makes sense, no, or just maybe we just go with a, uh, a, a framework for that as well. Um, anyways, those are my thoughts. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Bob. And there's, again, uh, I always enjoy the conversation, debate, discussion in the security committee. Uh, you know, there's there's some real experts in there. There's people in that committee who are willing to learn and ask questions and things like that. And so it's it's a exciting place. There are some challenges to overcome, but at least we are bringing them up to the top. We're having an open conversation about it. People are learning. Uh, enterprises are joining and putting their thoughts and their experiences of trying to overcome some of the security committee, uh, some of the security issues. So, guys, I think I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully, the audience has found that interesting. Um, I'm going to ask some questions and maybe ask a few people to talk about their experiences in security. And if there's any questions that uh, I can't answer or the rest of the team can't answer, we'll make sure we'll, we'll come back to you and take email addresses and make sure we get back to the people. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your continued hard work in this space and look forward to driving forward and helping enterprises move from that prototype into full production with AR solutions. So thank you very much, guys, and uh, speak to you soon. Very good. Thank you very much, Mark. We appreciate the opportunity and thank you to everyone in the audience. We look forward to speaking with you further at some point. Bye-bye.